Welcome back to game number two in our series between Fnatic Knighton and Dignitas Murs. I'm DJ Wee from OneMoreGame.tv, and you are tuned in to the IPL Season 2. That's right, the first season was so damn good that a second season was inevitable. Make sure to check out IGN.com slash IPL for not only additional information on these players, but a slew of content, including interviews, some uh, advanced analysis and content from some of the other members of the IPL team. So we've got a great series of players this season, a great series of commentators as well. So you know what? I may be sitting here and commentating, but you better believe, whoa, what was that that we just saw at Emerge? A little misclick there. You better believe that I'm a spectator as well. And this is game number two between Fnatic Night End and Dignitas Mers. Game, game one on Tall Dream Altar did go to Night End. And Mers. A little bit of like, hey, maybe I'll use six SCVs to build that supply depot. Maybe not so much. Merz is going to be our Red Terran spawning in the southeast position. Night End is going to be our Blue Protoss spawning in the northwest. It will be cross positions. We see this early scout coming out here by Night End. He's going to quickly check up in this base. Go, yeah, there's nothing going on in here. And knows exactly where Merz is going to be. Now, the Rax is going to be built here uh, a little bit further away from the front. Let's see SCV going to go ahead and go out and scout as well. No gas going down, so probably going to have a one racks expand coming out by MERS. Uh, standard opening for the Terran on this particular map, just due to the fact that uh, it's going to be cross positions. He doesn't really know it yet, but MERS is going to scout that no problem. So as this racks finishes up, we'll see what we're going to see out of there. As you can already see, his uh, minerals floating pretty high. Good indication here with no gas and uh, how high the minerals are, that we're going to go ahead and uh, get that fast expand. And uh, uh, looks like the orbital uh, going to go up and the first Marine coming out. And then we'll see the command center going down. Meanwhile, the gateway will uh, finish up with the cybernetics core right behind it. Merz is going to be doing some scouting inside the base of Niden, see exactly what he can see. And a probe is going to block that with a pylon. Now, effective... Not nearly as effective as it would be versus Zerg. Um, why? Well, you're going to have these Marines out. And I'm guessing we're going to see a cancel here, but no. Wow, interesting. So what they did do is it didn't allow MERS to build on the low ground. If you allow MERS to build on the low ground, that means that his expansion is going to get up much, much quicker. But now, of course, with the pylon going down, he had to bring the Marines out. He had to go ahead and kill it. And he knows that he has delayed this just a little tiny bit. Now, all it means is that Merz is going to finish this command center here. And he's going to have to lift it, float it over. And that is kind of what caused the delay. Another rack's coming out. Got no add-ons, but both refineries going down right now over on the Terran, or excuse me, the Protoss side. See that still with the one gas, the warp gate research, right around 30% uh, done right now. So let's see what we're going to have. Stalker moving out. He's going to go ahead and throw down a Nexus right now uh, before his gateways. And he's not really chrono boosting his uh, warp gate research. So uh, it shouldn't really be much of a problem. That won't like finish up before his gateways uh, are even ready to do it. And there we see the command center finishing. Bunker going to be at the top of the ramp. And the fa no, the another Rax is going to go down because he just does not have enough gas quite yet. But mining out of both of those. See some mules be dropped, and uh, we're going to have a tech lab going down. Likely see Stim right away after that. And there we see the additional gateways for Night End going down right now. So going with like a three-gate expand, uh, throwing down that Nexus before those gateways coming out. Has the sentry down here for any sort of uh, oh-no type moment. He also has this stalker 
And I love the placement of this stalker. He can pop in here, check to see if that command center has been moved over. It's not going to be able to get past this particular area right here because the fact that we do have the four Marines and the bunker sitting right there. SCV is going to be able to make it out of the base and the stalker will be, uh, I guess he will be found as that SCV knows exactly where he is. But we've got Knight in with vision in the middle. He'll also see that SCV going on over. Marines are going to come out to try to pick off this stalker and uh, do, uh, I really like how MERS decided to engage there and uh, definitely something to learn. What we saw there is MERS actually moved as close to the stalker as he possibly could, hoping that Night End wasn't going to give an instant reaction. And that's exactly what happened. And by the time Night End was able to react, it was a surefire thing that that stalker was going to go down. So smart move, good decision coming out by MERS. The factory going down right now, reactor on one of the racks. And then we have Stim. As I mentioned earlier, with plus one weapons underway. Where is that NG Bay? There it is right over there. Meanwhile, over on the other side, both gases going down for Night End, putting another pylon at the front here. Uh, taking a quick look at the worker count, we see our Protoss player uh, well ahead is about 10 workers right now and is pulling in higher income than the Terran player. Going to go ahead and get that robotics facility and that first observer out. Really, really key. But a nice little attack force that is going to just uh, play out perfectly as far as upgrades are concerned. Uh, is going to see that stim finishing up. He forced his opponent out of the middle, denied him that vision. Of course, the observer's coming in. So it'll be less of a factor for night end. Of course, you still want to try to control these towers. You don't want your opponent to have vision. But with the observer, which I think was spotted by Mers as he is kind of making his way over, could see a scan here, find out if we have enough for a scan. Uh, do we do not? But there is the missile turret and the bunker combination. And good night, Observer, as it will go down. We're going to see the Forge, the Twilight Council. So a very similar build coming out of Night End that we saw in the last game. Uh, not really much deviation here at all. Twilight Council, probably see him go blink as he did in the previous matches. And uh, then we might even see him go ahead and convert over to the uh, Templar Archives. The HTs, High Templar, did very, very well in that last matchup. Mers with another gas at his natural. Both of them occupied here in the main as well. Putting up some additional missile turrets. Try to keep his opponent's eyes out of his base. Also getting the combat shield upgrade with the medevac starting to drop. Now the factory not really doing much of anything right now. So we will have a focused bio army. There we see Blink underway with the plus one ground weapons. And another observer is out. Now he's got to be careful. There are a couple of uh, missile turrets scattered all over. He finds a nice little place to hide. He's going to get in range of that missile turret. Takes one, two, not a third hit. Boom! And not paying attention will lose that observer. Quickly, we will see the reaction come out by the Protoss players. Mers has a nice little assault force moving forward. There are some good uh, sentries here full of energy with force fields and about seven stalkers out on the field. See if he's throwing down any more gateways. Yes, he's just finished up two gateways. There's a third one as well, so he'll be operating on six gates. And we're going to have a lift into the main. Oh, that gateway will go down, and this could be a potential for a lot of damage here. He's got to be careful. Going to pop that Guardian Shield. Great, great force fields blocking in a lot of those units, but picked up by the Medivac. A beautiful move by Mers, and now the Protoss kind of fighting for his life here as the Terran doing quite a bit of damage here with the Concussive Shells and the Stim and the Combat Shield, making them super effective. Zealots will be warped in here, and another drop uh, over here as we did have a few Marines kind of Stim in. Not much of a drop, just to send some Marines in. It's going to go ahead and kill a pylon and do some more damage to the back line here. It's going to try to focus down those medevacs and the zealots desperately trying to get in. And here comes the sandwich from the back. One medevac uh, does fall. The second one manages to get away with a lot of units. And this actually will be important because he was left with three Marines and a Marauder. Means he'll be able to do a little bit more damage later on if he uh, ever wants to. And uh, that will always kind of be a constant threat. So uh, Blink is finished up, and now Charge is uh, on its way. We're also going to see that Templar Archives going down as well. And I'm not sure if that was actually spotted. Let's see where we've got that. I think it was... Uh, uh, okay, I'm blind. I am blind. Do not see the Templar Archives at all. That drop did return in the back. 
will be cleaned up by the Zealots. And seriously, where... There it is. Sorry. Uh, that's why I wear glasses, folks. Templar Archives in the back at the natural. Got it. I feel safe now. Uh, we've got plus two weapons coming out for the Terran. Right now, the upgrades are sitting at a 1-1 one, one with four medevacs out. One thing, though, got to be careful about with Murs, where we found him in the last game, is that uh, you know if we ever do decide to see a switch over to Colossus, which is not the case right now, kind of going with a heavy, heavy ground army focusing on the upgrades. Might be able to do uh, some damage. Of course, last time, there just simply weren't enough Vikings to be able to take care of those initial Colossus. They did a lot of damage, and now a third base going up for Nighten. I do not see any indication that a third base is going to be happening here for Murs. Something you might want to be considering here. Of course, Murs could opt to take this one right here, a very safe third to take. Harder to transition or uh, to uh, made it over all of your SCVs without taking out the rocks. But of course, if you take out the back rocks, you're not totally putting yourself uh, in danger because you can get there and your opponent would have to take out these rocks in order to gain access there. Now, what is the Protoss doing? About ready to finish up with Storm here. Has a lot of High Templar already warped in. They're just sitting there and gaining energy. And here we have a drop in the back. We're going to have a few Marines come. Oh, feedback and a Storm. Adding insult to injury there. Of course, that does give away the High Templar, but using every single piece of utility that those guys have available to them. Right now, taking a look at the supply count of our two armies. 124 for Murs from Team Dignitas. Over on the other side, we've got 123 for Night End. And a little bit different because Night End did have a pretty significant supply advantage in the last game was able to utilize that and kind of carry him into victory or is now Murs is he going to throw up that command center and the ghost academy is up now in a matchup Protoss versus Terran we have seen ghosts become insanely popular however in that last game I felt like Murs not really bringing uh, the same amount of ghosts that he needed to in order to be effective. However, this game, we've got something much different happening. Already six ghosts out on the field. He obviously is going to be focusing on EMPs. And with those High Templar, that's important. With the sentries, that's important. But even more so, the fact that he's mostly ground army units and has no Colossus right now is going to be a very, very big deal. Now we do see the robotics bay going up, a second robotics facility being made, so there is still the potential of those Colossus. How effective will these EMPs be, however? We will see the scan to take out the observer. Some solid EMP hits could negate all the storms, could make these units just melt, and here we go. Where's the EMP? EMP in the back. The High Templar have not been hit yet, and storms going down like absolutely crazy. The EMPs did hit a lot of those units, but there we now see all the energy gone out of the Templar. It's not going to matter, however. The damage was done, and look at how quickly. Down to 127 supply for the Terran, 144 supply for the Protoss, trying to now get this command center up. Has this one finished, lifted, and I suspect that we're going to see it send it off to over there, but we have a pylon being warped in over here by Nighten. That, of course, will make harassment on the third very easy, and it's not going to be something the Terran's going to want to have to deal with. Let's take a look at the ghost count after that last one. We do are now uh, at four ghosts. Wow, we're going to see the command center land right there, which is going to be a pretty unsafe position. Of course, you can see that Vision is there, but he is going to morph into a planetary. Oh, and he just could attack from the back. What he wants to do is not let him take out that expansion. If Nighten moves in there and takes that out, it would be a very, very horrible situation. In fact, we're going to see Zealots taking that out over there. Uh, another command center is going to be lifting up, so it was canceled. And will one of these expansions get up? I still feel like a safer route would have been sending it over here. But again, you don't have any easy way to transfer your SCVs over. Oh, Storm on the SCVs. He doesn't do a big hit on the, uh, but, oh, there's a big hit coming out. It's going to soften up a lot of SCVs. The planetary finishes, however, and the medevac's going to have to waste some energy. Helping out and trying to save those SCVs. Got another Nex Nexus going up right here. 
And really, the key to this battle for the Terran is going to be these ghosts in here. Only four ghosts. They do have a lot of energy there. But I have a feeling if Colossus are come out, and they will be coming out, we got plus three weapons on the way for the Protoss. He is going to be on four base in just a moment, heavily guarded over here from drops. This command center is going to finish up. This one is going to be done, and now that the planetary is there, it's going to be less of a problem. He's going to check up here, make sure there's no pylon. Unfortunately, he didn't check all the way forward. So plus three coming out for the Terran. Take a look at his upgrades. He is at 2-2. Two, two. He is a little bit higher on those army upgrades. We haven't seen a whole lot of ghost production here by Murs, however. And with these Colossus out, three Colossus, this is going to be such a devastating force to deal with. 189, he's going to scan beyond the grass, and there is, oh my god, the EMP missed because the Stalkers blinked out, and that will allow these units to come in. They're still fully cocked with Storms right now, and could do a ton of damage. The Terran army is going to bait him backwards, has a lot of medevacs in play right now. So far, the Colossus has been pretty ineffective. And there we're going to see Storms and the Colossus combo doing a ton of damage there to the bio units. There are just an absolutely ton of medevacs here, but it may not matter if you have no ground units to heal up. One sentry falls down. We're going to see that command center fall as well. And the supply right now, 136 to 185 for the Protoss. He's going to clear out this tower. He kept all of his Colossus alive and at full health. He's going to meet up yet again. He'll be able to attack the planetary. Oh, he loses two High Templar, but still manages to get a storm off and a second storm as well. Does look like the Terran Mers will go ahead and get this army out of there and the planetary fortress manages to stay alive as well. But Murr's just finding himself needing to reproduce ghosts. That means no new Marauders coming out, getting a lot of Marines, and finally now getting his Viking count up. But again, is it going to be too late? He could continue to harass with these Colossus against the Planetary Fortress, or he might just choose to come into attack. And look at this, three more Colossus joining in. There are nine High Templar, all of them with at least one Storm able to be thrown down. And... Murs just cannot commit. He would really almost want to try to bait some of these storms out. And there's not enough Vikings out right now to deal with this. He's going to go ahead and stem forward. We have the Guardian Shield popping. The first storm's going down. And six Colossus beating away. And there's no hope for Murs. GG. As easily Night End will roll over that Terran army, having to lead the entire game and just basically stepping up over Murs like he is a ladder and Night End is trying to get to the top. And that means that Night End will advance with a 2-0 victory over his Terran opponent, Murs, from Team Dignitas. And we will be seeing him again in the winner's round two, while Murs will be dropped down to the lower bracket. I am DJ Wheat. This has been another matchup for the winner's round one in the IPL season two. And we've got more StarCraft action coming at you. Don't forget to check out IGN.com slash IPL.